evening, everyone. Welcome back to our Wednesday Advent services, the final one for the season. And uh, yeah, I just realized that candle's blocking my view, so that wasn't a very good plan. Sorry about that. I'll move it when we start singing. But uh, anyway, just be sure to um, uh, just a reminder that uh, services on Saturday will be at 4 p.m., 7 p.m., and 9 p.m. The 4 and the 9 o'clock will be traditional services. The 7 p.m. will be uh, the praise service. Um, uh, please anticipate more people than normal. So you may want to get here just a tad bit early if you're one of those who like running in five minutes before worship. Maybe not a good idea on Christmas Eve. So, that, and then of course one service on Christmas Day, it is on a Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and that will just be lessons and carols if you'd like to join us for that, okay? I'd like to invite us now to a brief moment of silence as we center our hearts and minds for worship. And how about you just stay seated, unless you want to stand. Is it okay to stay seated? Is that right? It's a, it's a long time to stand. So. And let, uh, everything you need should be printed for you in your, book, in your bulletin, is there? Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world.
here, and Karen will leave part two. to give light to those who sit in darkness 
and in the shadow of death to guide their feet, our feet, into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please pray with me. Gracious and abundant God, we humble ourselves before you tonight as we remember this prophecy of Zechariah. Lord, we know that we are so unworthy of your forgiveness, your grace, your mercy. And so I pray today that the brokenness within us be healed, that you hear us as we lift our voices in song and prayer to you. And may the meditation of my heart and mind be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the year before the pandemic, I was visiting, well, no, it was before that when I started visiting her, but she was still in her home then. So it was uh, Edna Parsons, was a member in my former congregation. <coughs> a very devout Lutheran woman, but she didn't say much. When I was visiting with her, she just had always very short answers. In fact, I really didn't think she liked me at all. I would go visit and I would say, so tell me about what's been going on this week, you staying busy? Yes. <laughs> Have you been reading the meditation book I brought you? Yes, of course. So, did you watch worship online this week? Yes. Just very nonchalant. And she, her home was very modest. She didn't have a whole lot. She had what she needed. She had a caretaker that came in to take care of the house, cleaned it for her, cooked for her, I believe. And then when she uh, got to the point where she couldn't stay in her home, she was moved into a nursing home. And then I went to see her regularly in the nursing home. Much the same conversations in the nursing home. Edna, how are you doing? Fine. <laughs> so, are you getting involved with the activities here in the nursing center? No, I don't like them. <laughs> okay, have you spoken to someone about that? No. Would you like for me to? No, that's not. She was always polite, always answered my questions, and then the year before the pandemic, she passed. And I was tasked with doing her funeral. And of course, what do you say about a woman who doesn't really say a whole lot in the first place? And so it was a bit of a challenge for me as I met with her family, and, um, and actually we found out she didn't have much family except for one niece. And she and her husband lived modestly their entire lives. And then, four months later, at, in 2000, when, when, when the pandemic, 2020, right? So it was 2019, four months later, we get a letter in the mail to the church saying that she left her entire estate to the church. $1.6 million. <laughs> I about fell out of my chair when I saw it. I think I did, actually. And I, and I remember I screamed, and then I immediately, of course, called the council president and everything. I said, you're not going to believe what I just got in the mail. And then, of course, we, we had to make a lot of decisions about the money. And, and of course, we sent 10% to the Senate, so when they got a check for $33,000, the bishop called me and said, I about fell out of my chair. I said, I know. So needless to say, by the time the pandemic hit, we were pretty comfortable. And, and we were worried that once the congregation found out that we received this wonderful gift, that the giving would just stop. I mean, why would, it, would people continue giving money if they know we received this huge windfall? But then the niece contacted the church because she, was, she hardly got anything out of the estate. And the reality was, she didn't have a relationship with her aunt. And so, the only relationship that she had was with the church. She gave everything she had to the church because that was where her family was. She sung in the choir. She served in council. She had done all these things before she just physically couldn't do it anymore. And so, this wonderful gift that she left set up the church for years to come. 
you know, we obviously had to make a lot of decisions about the money, and I remember I had to call two of my colleagues going, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing! <laughs> because how, how many people have that much money laying around that I, I, none of us had any clue that she had money like that? She tied regularly, but never to the point of, you know, we thought maybe she might have been a wealthy woman. But here's the thing. You know, we all have those moments when we feel so overwhelmed with the joy and everything that we forget sort of to pause and take, take a moment to take all those things in. And I think Zechariah's story here and, and what we just read in his prophecy, so let's back up a little bit. For the last several weeks, we've been talking about preparing and getting ready and where Christ dwells, and now we hear Zechariah's cry. And he, of course, is prophesizing about his son that, that is going to be born soon in John the Baptist. And so, and here is this story that reminds us of me, me, me. And, and I think well, why, why I wanted to share that in the story, not so that you call, call my old church and ask about it or anything, but so that, so that we can be reminded of the things that we sometimes get within ourselves for. Edna never lived a life of excess. And I think it's so easy for us to live that way in our modern world. We think about the things that we don't have instead of the things that we do already have. And the one thing that Zachariah's story reminds us of is the mercy and forgiveness that we have received on account of the birth of Jesus Christ. And in this last week of Advent, we are reminded to sort of push pause for just a moment to remember everything that we have instead of the things that we don't. Do you remember the story of the Grinch? I'm sure many of you have probably seen it on, on network TV over the last several weeks, right? The Grinch steals everything. Right? And what do the who's do? Do they cry about it? Do they whine about it? Do they stand around the tree and go, oh, woe oh, is me. We have no presents. We have no tree. We have no life. No. They stand around together, holding hands, and singing anyway. And if I want you to think for just a moment. I'm sure that many of you have Christmas trees and have sent all your presents and everything. And all of those things have been done. But if all of those things were taken away right now, would you be happy about it? How would you feel? Well, I, don't, I have, I've had a few gifts, and I try not to open things before Christmas when people give them to me or send them to me, but it's really hard for me. But anyway, so I have, I have one that I have not opened from my mother under my tree. And I, and I specifically put it in there just to remind me that it's okay. I, I can wait. I can wait to be patient. And I have to remind myself daily. Sometimes I have to say that out loud. What would happen if the gift went away? It would be okay. My life would move on. I don't know that I'd stand around my tree singing like the Who's of Whoville did. But I would certainly be okay. And that's the whole point, is that sometimes we get so wrapped up in thinking, woe is me, and everything that I need and desire, that we forget to just pause for just a moment and to give thanks for everything that transpired on that starry night in a lowly manger in the middle of a field with shepherds as witnesses and oxen and lamb standing nigh, as the hymn says, on a very starry, cold night. Because that, that awesomeness that, that took place in that baby is what that center candle is all about. Jesus Christ being the light of the world and forgiving us of our sin, giving us everything in that moment is what Christmas is all about. And I'm going to share more about that on Christmas Eve, so that's just a little bit of a foretaste of the feast to come. But I want to invite us all 
in this last few days to think about the things that you have in excess and what maybe you can do without so that your light of Christ shines as brightly as the one that will light on Christmas Eve. That is what this season is about. The forgiveness that we receive in a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes. The mercy that we receive at the table of Christ, when we all come forward extending our hands as beggars, wanting to receive the gift that lies therein. Do you know what you are receiving in that moment? It is the gift of love, mercy, grace, forgiveness all wrapped up in one. And that is why we celebrate Advent, for us to be reminded of what is to come, what continues to dwell within us, and how God can continue to illuminate that light within us so that our lives are a light for others in this weary world, in a world that needs to hear it. That's what Advent is all about. And so for the next couple of days, I invite you all, sure, take in the lights, take in the gifts that are wrapped, take in the time with your family, take in the, the opportunities to do things that maybe we wouldn't have the opportunity to do anyway, but also hit pause for just a moment and let us remember what this season is truly about. Amen. The light shines in the darkness.
ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding, and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Thank you, Karen.